Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video. Uh, this time it's just going to be some basically post-duel match commentaries. I haven't done this in a while, and it's probably going to be very difficult for me to try and commentate this in a cohesive manner since I haven't done this in a while. But this is something I want to get back into doing. Uh, doing things like this for like testing different matchups of the new format, testing relevant matchups, testing rogue against those matchups and stuff like that, and doing it in as competitive of a way as I can think of possible, which is to play a couple of matches of actual like sideboarded games and stuff like that. So that is what I'm doing for this video. This video is going to be Gym Knight FTK versus the new format TCG Goki deck, at least what uh, the people that I know and play against regularly are uh, testing with the deck as well as my own knowledge of the deck and stuff like that. Uh, there may be some like techs and things for the 200th YCS um, in Columbus, Ohio that uh, come to light after the fact, but this is pretty much against like what I would consider a standard Goki list. But so what you see on the screen is my Gym Knight FTK list currently. Uh, there are a couple things I'm considering changing, like maybe taking out the one of Magnet Reverse, putting the second Crystal Rose back in because of the fact that I am playing 42 with three desires. Um, a bunch of different things are factors into what this makes this list look like it is. One of the big standout things is that Tourmaline is not in this list. I'm playing Sapphire instead, because instead of playing, um, instead of playing, uh, Gym Knight Prismora, which could easily be played to out face up cards, I am instead playing Gym Knight Amethyst, which is basically an on-theme Hey Trunade, which you just fuse into as one of your first plays for the turn against a back row deck, and then you either fuse away with it or link it into Phantom Courts, uh, and then it bounces all your opponent's back row. Uh, and then you're just basically free to start zerging the field and doing effect damage and possibly OTKing them as well because you may have a battle phase. Uh, just a bunch of things to consider. But So there's definitely some things on deck building that could change. Uh, drag down is good for dodging hand traps. Same with Called by the Grave. You could easily probably incorporate Magical Midbreaker Field into the list. Um, there's a bunch of things that could change. There's, this deck has a lot of room for improvement. Uh, there's two Gym Armadillos because of the play with Block Dragon searching one. If you open with one, you could obviously search the other. And then there's the Desires thing as well. There's a bunch of different things that are in this uh, that are in this deck list for reasons. <laughs> it's literally the best way I can put it is reasons. One of the things I wanted to test is uh, the Predaplant Engine. Maybe that instead of Desires because then that searches the, the Fusion spells. Whereas Desires is a, an uh, artificial consistency booster. Uh, the Predaplants would be sort of the same sort of thing, and you can link them into Land for Linkus, and then go into Phantom Courts with your Fusion and stuff. There's there's a lot of different possibilities for the way the deck can play with different builds, and it's definitely something I'm going to be testing in the coming little bit of time, the coming weeks, essentially. I don't know how long I'm going to spend looking at this deck, because I kind of want to get back to uh, theorying with, like, Mermails a bit more, theorying with Ritual Beasts a bit more. I want to theory with a lot of different decks. It's, uh, it's very strange. I'm actually really excited to play Yu-Gi-Oh! for the first time in a really long time, but anyway, that's enough discussing about the deck and all that sort of nonsense. Let's just jump straight into the first of the two matches that were played, the first game of the two matches that were played, so six games total. Uh, and all that sort of stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I might be very bad at commentary because I haven't done this in a while, like I said. Anyway, let's go straight into the gameplay. Alright, so going into the first game, I get to start. My opening hand is pretty powerful, already having the Gym Knight Fusion and the Desires and a Gym Armadillo, and the Magnet Reverse is also really strong um, if I get interrupted with hand traps or whatever. But so, I actually use the Desires and I banish the other Gym Armadillo that is in my deck off of it which means that my play sequence has to be altered a bit. As you see off the block dragon here, I search Rose, uh, the Rose cr um, Crystal thing, Crystal Rose, yes, that one, um, instead of uh, summoning out of my deck, um, copying uh, Jim Armadillo, like I usually do in combos. Uh, but basically, the deck is very, very powerful at doing what it needs to do with any sort of amalgamation of hand. Gym Knights is definitely one of those things that's been very adaptable to any sort of format uh, in terms of like what you need to change around uh, of your combo structure. You just need to change it to the point where it works, and that's all you need to do. Uh, basically, you just get to sit there in solitaire as long as you can connect the dots easily enough for you to get to your uh, to your situation. So, we are playing sided games. I did not draw any hand traps. Uh, this is the first match being played. There's six games in total. We played two matches just for the, for the purpose of uh, getting enough games for video. But he starts, he gets to do his Goki shenanigans into Isolde. Dropping Headbat, Octo Stretch. He drew a Malicious, which is kind of good, but it still doesn't change very much because he just summons Sorceresses out another Goki name to get another search, and then when he goes for Firewall or for Nightmare Mermaid, 
uh, he's able to just discard the malicious from his hand or special the malicious from his hand. So here you see he's going to firewall special malicious, mermaid discarding phoenix blade. And basically he's just set up for the extra length gumblar trigate shenanigans uh, that's going to be happening. But my opponent is learning how to play Goki. Like he knows enough about the deck to play it in a cohesive manner but there's some small intricacies of the deck that he's trying to work out. So, like here, he actually just kind of did the combo on the wrong side of the board to end with the best result. Uh, he could have done it literally putting Firewall and Cerberus in opposite positions, and that Cerberus being Phoenix, then he would have been able to uh, end on Cerberus co-link to Trigate instead of Phoenix co-link to Trigate, which the Phoenix is super redundant here because he's ending on Double Mermaid in his extra monster zones. Meaning everything that's not co-linked is going down by 2,000. Meaning that I'm basically not going to be attacking over any of his mermaids anyway. Because whatever I would attack over the mermaids with to open up extra monster zones would be something that has to have literally 3,001 attack points before mermaids are affecting it in order to kill it. So, super redundant. But anyway, next game, he did not open any hand traps against me in this sided game. So that's neat. Uh, but my drag down to the grave snipes an Octo Stretch from his hand, which that's definitely like the first pick that I take playing against Goki with this deck is Octo Stretch because Octo Stretch does have that hand effect that lets you half burn damage, so that's actually pretty important. Uh, if they half one of your uh, one of your uh, first uh, Master Diamond or Lazuli burns, um, it like it's either for a burn for three thousand or thirty five hundred, and it cuts in half, so it's at seventeen fifty usually at most. Even if you give them the monster with Summon Sorceress, it would become a 1750 burn, because it would be 3500 cut in half, and thusly you're a little bit off of game. Like, you have to put, um, you burn them for, uh, you burn them for 47, uh, for 35, and then 1750, and then if you burn them for, uh, 2000, again, that's not enough for game, and I think even 25 is not enough for game, uh, just trying to do quick math in my head. You literally have to have such a good hand to be able to burn them for game through an Octo Stretch on one of your first burns. Um, it's, so it's definitely one of those things that when you drag down it, you just take it away. But so, from here, I open Desires, Rabbit, uh, play the Desires, summon the Rabbit. I didn't banish, uh, my, uh, Sapphires, which the Sapphires, I don't know if I said already. I can't remember. The Sapphires are being played because of Gem Knight Amethyst, uh, which is a very good card against Trickstar, Altergeist, uh, Sky Striker variants, stuff like that. Uh, you just fuse into Amethyst, and then you fuse that away or link it away into Phantom Quartz, and it bounces all of your opponent's back row. Uh, so it's like basically an in-engine Hey Trunade, so that's actually kind of cool and kind of good. But so, from here, uh, this is a new match, so it's an unsighted game. This is game four of the video. And so basically, I'm just able to win the die, well, win the die roll, essentially, rock, paper, scissors. And I'm able to just do my entire shenanigans and just FTK him uh, for exactly 8,000. Or actually a little bit more than 8,000. He was at 1,000, right? Because I burned him for 35 off the first two. Yeah. So it didn't even matter that I summoned that block dragon there. Uh, but that was just more damage. That's game through an upstart goblin. But upstart's not in my list because I'm playing more than 40. Because I just think desire is giving you more cards is superior. But so into this game, I draw several hand traps going second. I draw two rolls and a ghost ogre. Um, he's trying to do the play where he could still uh, gumblar me for four under droll. Uh, but that doesn't play through double hand traps. So Ogre on the uh, Summon Sorceress is really powerful here. and uh, the, But there's not really anything I can do to capitalize on it, um, unfortunately. I can't really capitalize here uh, because my hand isn't good enough to do anything, really. That's one of the problems with this deck is that if you don't draw away to Fusion Summon, uh, then you kind of, you're kind of <laughs> out, out of the water. You're... You're like SOL. You're just you're just gonna get blown out if you can't capitalize. Like I could have tried to capitalize on that turn had I drawn into a fusion or whatever, but unfortunately my hand just was not good enough to do so. Uh, and playing cards like Absorb Fusion don't really uh, help you out there because you're locked to summoning Gym Knights for the rest of the turn, which means you can't summon Sorceress, you can't block Dragon, you can't do anything like that. Which are the cards that allow you to do these plays. So things to consider. But so. He doesn't get to kill me. I think he could have killed me with some com uh, some variation of combo, but like I said, he's not super in tune on the intricacies of the deck, which is what he's trying to actively learn. Uh, and uh, basically, he still able, was able to hit me for a ton of damage and then firewall bounce my two guys when I summoned them to try and go to Phantom Courts. And then I just had to summon a block dragon and hope that I didn't die, but he's just able to unicorn the block dragon. So not really much capable of being, uh, being done there, but so... Last game, uh, I'm actually going second again. I just wanted to see what would happen if I draw like a good number of hand traps uh, against him going second. But he opens a mag uh, magical midbreaker field. 
uh, opens with engage. And now here, he adds Eagle Booster to his hand. I see him search the Eagle Booster. And I Ash Blossom his is old, just not thinking about it. I completely forgot what Eagle Booster's effect was, which is that you have to have no monsters in your main monster zone and you make the monster unaffected by card effects. So that means Ash Blossom on Isolde is not going to do anything. Uh, so, like, I should have definitely waited for him to summon Summon Sorceress, because then he has Summon Sorceress and a monster on the field if he's doing the headbat play. And then he can't Eagle Booster his Summon Sorceress, but then from there, if I Ash that, he doesn't get Malicious into circulation. He does still have Rematch, and he is still able to do a huge Goki play, but it's not as free of a play as what this is, because I basically just let him have an extra card out of my hand for free just because I forgot what Eagle Booster was, so not even really that much of an amazing, like, play string, and uh, it's one of these things where, like, this play from both sides during this game is very questionable. Uh, like, look, at he's got the <laughs> the Reproductus up in the extra monster zone pointing at my stuff, and he's gumblaring me for four, but I get to use the Obsidian that I discard, bring back the Vanilla, try to banish for Gemini Fusion, that gets negated off Trigate, I normal summon Jim Armadillo and use its effect to search, and he tries to firewall bounce, forgetting that he has his own midbreaker field up, so he can't target my monsters during my main phase. And then I mess up further by not going to battle phase with the two monsters on the field. I could have easily bounced, uh, attacked into the Link Karibo, and then attacked over the uh, Reproductus. Um, well, attack into the Reproductus twice, essentially. Um, and one Link Karibo would be used, but. Uh, then I could have cleared it and made Phantom Quartz and done some things, but I couldn't really clear his board uh, or do anything like that, so it still wasn't that amazing. I might have been able to burn him for game, unsure. I still don't think I could because I didn't have access to Block Dragon. Um, yeah, just ultimately, when you hit, get these two Solitaire decks together, basically it's literally just like outside of that one outlier game where like I hand trapped my opponent and he just um, and he just didn't kill me the next turn and I didn't have the capability of killing him. There's not really much to do in these combo game matchups other than just wait for someone to die. <laughs> it's really, it's, they're really fast paced matches that take very few turns, so not really like the most amazing thing for video purposes, I guess, but it is still a very relevant matchup in the North American TCG territory. I will probably be playing uh, Gym Knight FTK as well as some other decks uh, against other matchups as well in the coming days. Uh, it's been really hard to try and readjust myself to post dual commentary, but. Hopefully I can get better with it as time goes on. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, if you want to make some suggestions for some matchups or some decks to play, then definitely leave some comments in the comments down below and suggest those. But other than that, like the video if you liked what you saw and want to see more of it. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content and all that sort of stuff. If you want to watch me live stream frequently, go to my Twitch page, which is linked in the description. And if you want to go join my personal Discord for the channel, then there's a link to that in the description as well. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.